Abstinence for a week or more will increase testosterone levels up to 400%. It's important to note that there's a huge range in terms of the levels of hormones, testosterone and estrogen between individuals. And it actually occurs within individuals across the lifespan. Testosterone will fluctuate across the lifespan. Testosterone is gonna be relatively low pre-puberty in males. During puberty, it's gonna skyrocket. And then current numbers are that it drops off at about a rate of 1% per year. Although we're going to talk about some data that show that there's actually tremendous variation in testosterone levels. There's actually a lot of examples of men in their 90s who still have testosterone levels that mimic pubertal levels, which is remarkable and speaks to the huge variation in testosterone levels across individuals. Competition is a powerful influence on the sex steroid hormones and the sex steroid hormones powerfully influence competition. So most people don't realize this, but most males of a given mammalian species never get to reproduce. In fact, they never even get to have sex at all. And we don't often think about that, but testosterone plays a powerful role in determining which members of a given species will get to reproduce, which ones of that species will actually get access to females. And so here I'm not talking about humans specifically, but it's well known in species like elephant seals, in species like antlered animals and rams, for instance, that the higher levels of testosterone correlate with access to females. Now, one interpretation of this is that the females are detecting which males have high testosterone and selecting them. But it's actually more so that the males that have higher testosterone forage further and will fight harder for the females. And this is really interesting because there's very good evidence now that testosterone can reduce anxiety, promote novelty seeking, and promote competitive interactions. Testosterone has this incredible effect of making effort feel good. But what I was really referring to is the fact that testosterone lowers stress and anxiety, in particular in males of a given species. Now, this is important because we often think of testosterone as creating whatever, masculinization or it's, you know, virilization or all these, these terms are thrown around. But what's it really doing when it comes to mate choice and competition? What it's doing is it's reducing the threshold for anxiety. And in doing so, it selects individuals of a given species to push further, being willing to suffer more, although it also reduces pain. So maybe they also suffer less in pursuit of reproduction and feeling. Females. Now, it's well known in humans that both males and females who have elevated levels of testosterone will engage in more novelty seeking. And I do want to point out that even individuals without testes have testosterone and peaks in testosterone have similar effects regardless of whether or not someone has ovaries or testes. Testosterone increases generally lead to more foraging, more novelty seeking, increases in libido, and increases in desire to mate. So it is the case that increases in testosterone promote competitive Competitive and foraging type behaviors in, in humans and in non-human mammals. It's also true that competition itself can increase androgens such as testosterone. Some people have come to the conclusion that if you win, your testosterone goes up, and if you lose, your testosterone goes down. And to some extent, that's true, but that's not a direct effect on the gonads. That's actually mediated by the neuromodulator dopamine. Dopamine and testosterone have a remarkable interplay in the body. Dopamine is actually released in the brain in ways that has the pituitary, this gland that sits over the roof of your mouth, release certain hormones that then go on to promote the release of more testosterone. And indeed, winning promotes more dopamine and later more testosterone. However, in the short term, just competing increases testosterone independent of whether or not you win or lose. And this may be an ancient mechanism whereby androgens such as testosterone are feeding back to encourage more competitive type behaviors because every species, whether or not you're talking about reproduction or other research, source allocation is involved in competition. Not every individual of a species gets access to the same number of mates or the same quality of mates. And this is true in both directions for males and females and everything in between. There's a particular phase of the menstrual cycle where testosterone peaks just before ovulation that on average leads female humans to seek out sex more than they would otherwise during their cycle. So testosterone promotes sex seeking behavior. And the real question then is, does sex itself promote testosterone? The short version 
version is yes. Sex has multiple stages. So there's the physical act of sex, there's the seeking of sex, and then there's orgasm and ejaculation. It's important to distinguish between these because whether or not sex itself increases testosterone depends on whether or not the male ejaculates. After ejaculation, there's a release of prolactin and prolactin actually sets the refractory period in males during which he can't have sex again. And the duration of the refractory period will vary tremendously depending on how much and how long that prolactin release occurs. So there are studies showing that sexual behavior itself can increase testosterone. There was a study published in 2011 from Escasa et al. These are quality studies showing that men who observe sex, so I guess this would be observing pornography, will have slight increases in testosterone during the observation. They had increases in testosterone that were very modest of about 10%. Whereas when people participated in sex, they actually did this study where people had blood draws and they had real sex with their partners and they had 70% increases in testosterone. So there are increases in testosterone that are quite significant during physical act of sex and far less so during observing sex. The question that I often get, in fact, is one of the questions I get most often in the comments on YouTube, I don't know why that is, is whether or not ejaculation adjusts testosterone levels. And it turns out that sex and ejaculation itself does not reduce testosterone levels, although it will increase prolactin levels. However, abstinence or sex without ejaculation for a week or more will increase testosterone levels up to 400%. So the answer is actually complicated. It's not straightforward. What it means is that sex itself increases testosterone. However, abstinence also increases testosterone even further.